Let me turn your attention today to the book of Psalms. I'll turn you there to chapter 127. I want to give a great big shout out and a thank you to all of the team, brother and sister Matthews and this youth team that have led our students, chaperones that have worked. They have gone without sleep. We honor them, our young people. It was amazing for them to gather with somewhere between 33 and 34,000 young people uh, and worship the Lord. Somebody said, what do they do? They have church. Two and a half days, they just kind of have church. I think they had some fun in between and we're thankful for that. We honor them. Part of that special event was we had what is known as North American Talent Search. That's what they call it, but it's students that have given their talents to the Lord. That's why they, how many believe we're supposed to give our talents unto the Lord? That's biblical. It's in the gospels. It's in the parables. And so not talent by the world standards, but talent biblically and return it to the Lord. And I'm thankful to tell you that the, Wat, the Watkiss children were a part of that and took second place in the nation. Man, and we appreciate for all the people in the room that can't sing at all. They took that on your behalf. <laughs> Psalm 127, verses 3 through 5. Lo, lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows, everyone say as arrows. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. I want to preach to this congregation. We've already talked about the children that were dedicated, but we're moving beyond that. Not just for these children, not just for every one of our smaller children and teenagers and young adults, but this message is meant to envelop every person that truly is a child of God. A child of God. How many know that we don't get to outgrow being a child of God. We're dependent upon Him. Amen? And from that textural consideration, I would preach to you as I feel so moved on this topic, like arrows in His hand. Like arrows in His hand. If you would be so kind, pray with me and pray for yourself that the, the Word of the Lord might find lodging in our lives. Lord, we love you. We thank you for what we feel. Your presence, your spirit has been so evident and so obvious in this house. We thank you for the children that have been dedicated, for the church family that has committed along with these families. But we thank you for every person in this room being a believer and having faith in Christ, being in fact the children of God. We believe that you have divinely orchestrated this service. In fact, the songs that have been sung, even the choir song that was just saying, oh God, it lets us know that you have divinely orchestrated what you desire to accomplish here today. Let your will be done. Let your word find lodging in our hearts and let there be an amen that comes from our mouths in agreement. We ask it in Jesus' name and let everybody say amen if you agree. God bless you, and you may be seated here today. Like arrows in his hand. I would tell you, if arrows are to be entrusted, there should be consideration to whose hand they're placed into. Arrows in the wrong hand can be a detriment not simply to others, 
but even the individual that is holding them. Arrows need to be placed intentionally and strategically into the right hand. I'm going to do something that I don't always do. I'm going to tell you from the very onset of this short message, my objective. I want every person in this room to be an arrow in the hands of the Lord. I believe it is His will. And while we, we're going to speak to the physical and to the natural and to the children and the way that we have them in our hand and according to the psalmist, the way we look at it, I would present to you there seems to be definitive language with the like and the likeness and the type and the shadow that while the natural children are placed into the hands of parents, that we as individuals are meant to be in the hands of an almighty God. I don't want to go where I desire to go, but rather even as the inanimate object of an arrow cannot make up for itself where it decides to fly, but it is up to the archer to direct it. I would so present from the beginning of this message, we got to get ourselves in the hands of the Lord. And let the Lord do what only the Lord can do. How many know that if we direct our own paths, we will be in trouble? But if we will let the Lord direct our paths, if we will let the Lord direct our families, if we will let the Lord direct our actions, then we can hit the mark he intends to hit. I don't want to find myself hitting a mark that is not his desire. I want to do what he wants me to do. I want to go where he wants me to go and be what he wants me to be. For what good is an arrow that never takes flight? And if we are not careful, we treat our arrows as relics and we treat them as something we look upon. But every person in this room that's ever been a part of archery knows you can look at that arrow all day long, but until you get it in your hands Put it on the string and pull that string back and let that bow do what it's intended to do in the right hands. It's only potential. I don't want to be guilty of God saying you had all the potential, but you wouldn't get in my hands. You had the ability to fly, but you wouldn't let me direct you. Because of who we are, we are a church that believes if we will put things in his hands, he can and he will do anything. We are a church that believes that when people call upon the name of the Lord, he hears and he answers. We believe that he is a God of restoration. If you believe it, say amen. We believe that he is a God of strength. If you believe it, say amen. We are, a, we are a group of people like arrows in his hand that believes he is still a miracle working God. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above what we could ask or even think. The reason that we have had this baby dedication is because we believe that if we do our part, it can only be accomplished by putting ourselves in his hand. And how can we direct them unless he is directing us? I'll say it again, how can we direct them unless he is directing us? Because we believe that the Lord is the ultimate uh, deciding factor on all things. It was this last week I was in a conversation uh, with an individual from this church, one of our grandmothers who called and said, we need a miracle. Baby Maverick was in the hospital. And Baby Maverick, I think, is in this building today, somewhere in this building. You can wave at me if he's here. I think he is. He was supposed to be here, but... Yeah, yeah. Thank God. Look, baby Maverick over here. Sister Brown called me the other day and said, we need a miracle. There is water around his heart and there are holes in baby Maverick's heart. And we went to prayer immediately and I felt the Lord speak to me. Now listen, faith and risk go together. Faith and risk go together. 
And so I, I, I responded to her and said, I feel like tomorrow morning when that baby goes in for his test, the water's going to be gone and the heart's going to be taken care of. I got a frantic text from her around 11 a.m. The doctors can't explain it, but there's no fluid around the heart and the holes in the heart are gone. I can explain that. Now, if you don't believe that he's a miracle worker, you keep it. But if you do, you ought to praise God and magnify God and act like he's still a miracle working God. And I thank God, you listen to me, I thank God for the hands of surgeons, but I thank God for the hands of the great physician that's able to step in when nobody and nothing else can step in. And to be everything that we want to be, we've got to stay in his hand. If you believe it, say amen. amen. In Psalm 127, there seems to be some givens, some understoods that are here. They're not completely spelled out. They just seem obvious that when we're speaking here in verse 4, arrows are in the hand of a mighty man or as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man. The only address that we get here is about the arrows. We get the potential, as it were, of the arrows in the hands of this mighty man, but it seems to be a given that the arrows work with the bow. And riddled throughout the pages of Scripture, you can find it in the Old and in the New Testament, the weaponry of the bow. It is referenced all throughout Scripture, even into the book of Revelation, that the bow and the arrows go hand in hand. And as arrows are in the hand of the mighty man. In Psalm 127 is giving us the understanding. That the arrow by itself is not effective. But the arrows in the hand of a mighty man. Mean that they are arrows in the hand of someone that is skilled. With the ability to utilize the bow. I would speak to you and tell you that the arrow without the bow is about as good as the bow without the arrow. But even the bow and the arrow without being in the right hand. Brother Gwaltney has been a part of helping teach archery at CCS for which you probably deserve hazard pay. <laughs> Sorry to any past or current students. But Brother Gwaltney, haven't you watched that although all the potential is there until they learn how to appropriately hold the bow, until they learn how the bow goes on, the arrow... Well, that's silly. That's backwards. Well, if we're not careful, a lot of us do it. Backwards. And we end up shooting ourselves. Now, for anyone that is concerned, I know where the odd feather goes and I know how it gets clipped on and I recognize. But Brother Gwalt need this in the wrong hand. If I asked for an apple on the head demonstration, Nobody in the room is going to be comfortable. If I randomly ask one of our children to come and give us an audience demonstration. But once you, Brother Gwaltney, have begun to train, isn't it amazing you have watched what I have watched? That the more time they spend there at the target, the more that they learn how to pull and how to hold and recognize the necessity of balance and recognize how to look down, it is becoming muscle memory where the more that they shoot, the greater it becomes. And 
Eventually, arrows that were in the hands of an unskilled and untrained individual now seem to hold a greater level of bullseye potential upon use. I remind everybody in this room, God doesn't miss. God does not miss. The only time that we end up hitting a target we're not supposed to hit is when we take the bow out of his hands. We take ourselves as the arrows out of his hands and we try to do things on our own. But I come to remind us in this place on this Sunday morning that if we will allow not only the next generation that we're dedicating, but if we as people will allow ourselves to get into the hands of God. Brother Chris McGrath, you got a call of God on your life, but you try to do it on your own and you're going to have all the potential in the world and you're never going to hit the target. But if you'll become an arrow in the hand of God, I could speak that word around this room and remind every parent and every individual if we take our children out of the hands of God, we're in trouble. But if we'll put our children like arrows in the hands of a mighty man, Psalm 127 is speaking about a mighty man. I want to speak to you about the greatest man of all time, the man Christ Jesus. He is the great prince of peace and the great warrior of all time. And if we we will get in his hands. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, get in his hands. Get in his hands. There's something that happens here with this bow and this arrow and at the, at the risk of being a little scientific here today, there is what is known as potential elastic energy that is a part of the bow and a part of the string. The pulling upon the string and the Drawing backwards, it allows what is known as potential elastic energy to be created. But when that arrow is released from that string, all of the potential and all of the energy is now transitioned into what is known as kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy is placed into the arrow. And when in the hands of a skilled archer, all of the potential of the bow becomes recognized in the aim and in the positioning of the arrow. Hear me now. Gifted archers know how to, encounter, how to account for the environment, know how to adjust for wind, know how to adjust for distance, know how to get it just right depending upon what they're shooting at and what they're shooting in. I remind us here today, the situation you're dealing with is not so windy that the great archer of all time does not have to... He is not confused on exactly what you need and exactly how you need it. If you're in the middle of a financial windstorm, I promise you that if you'll trust him and get in his hands, he knows how to get you from where you are to where you're supposed to be. If you believe it, I want you to say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I speak to you in this house right now on behalf of the next generation. As the psalmist is speaking here about children and blessed is the man whose quiver, a quiver, if you don't know what a quiver is, it's not a chill that you get in the cold. That's a shiver. This is a quiver. A quiver is the thing that holds the arrows. What is holding? And he said, blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. That's got a quiver full of arrows. I'll tell you what I believe our assignment is in Indianapolis. To get as many arrows as we can in the quiver of God. To get as many arrows in the hands of God. And say, no, we don't just have one. And we don't just have two. And we don't just have three. You, you said if there would be two or three that would gather. And, and we don't want just one thousand. We we don't want just 2,000. We've got 2 million people in this city. And so we are strategically getting together and saying, yeah, there might be one or two, but there are hundreds, if not thousands, that are going to be accumulated in this city. And what is our assignment? I'll tell you what it is. There is an enemy that is after the gospel and after revival in this city. But if we can become arrows in the... I don't know what prayers to pray, but he does. And it's not meant for just one or two of us. It's meant for the entire body. 
The same way that you need all of your body, he wants to use the entire body in this hour as arrows in the... Say, yeah, but I'm 75 years old. You're a vital arrow in the hands of the master. You say, yeah, but my kid's only seven years old. They're a vital arrow in the hands of the master. Every child, every elder, every person. But the enemy's desire is to get you off the string and set you on the sideline somewhere. Here's what I have learned about God. Okay, here's what I, I don't want to drop this, somebody. Here's what I have learned about God. If I decide that I'm going to lay down and I don't want to be used, it doesn't take very long until somebody else says, well, if he doesn't want to be used... If he doesn't want to do something for the kingdom of God, hear me on this Sunday morning, he will have a church. He will have a victorious church. He will find an arrow. He will find an arrow that'll take all of this potential, that will take all of this potential, and it will be transferred from what is happening in this building to where we are meant to fly. I understand we're in a world that is rampant with drugs and alcohol addiction, but and I know this is old fashioned, but you hear me right now. I still believe that if we'll get in his hands, he'll give us the prayers to pray and the words to say, and he'll let us become arrows in the hands of a mighty, not a mighty, man but a mighty God he'll give us the ability to do something great to be victorious in his kingdom if you want to be used by God I want you to lift your hands and say God I want to be effective for your kingdom come on lift your hands and lift your voices all over this house And it's dedication Sunday, so I say it intentionally. Mom and dad, it matters where we aim them. It matters where we direct them. It matters what we do. It matters when we pull. It matters matters when we release. I've been an archer for the last 20 years. And I have found this. If you release at the wrong time, It only takes one degree of difference to go from a bullseye to missing the target. Aim is what matters most. The mechanics are built in, but the hands of a mighty man are dependent on the ability to aim. It was in 2004 at the Olympic Games. Some of you have heard this story shared before. His name is Matt Emmons. He was there. He's the number one air rifle individual at that time in the world. In 2004 at the Olympic Games in London, he had a commanding lead. He needed a mediocre score on his final shot. All he had to do was hit the target. On this day, he did, in fact, hit a bullseye on his third and final shot. The problem, Brother Grantland, is the bullseye that he hit was on the target in the lane next to the one he was supposed to be shooting at. He went from a guaranteed first place to an eighth place because he got one lane off in aim. I'm convinced the enemy's not even scared of us shooting right now as long as we get a little off in our aim at what our target is. I've come on this Sunday morning to remind us our aim is souls. Our aim is souls. Our aim is souls. I want to have good church, but our aim is souls. I want to have a pretty building, but our aim is souls. I want to have great music, but our aim is souls. He on the robo satire. I want God to know We're not arrows in our own hand. We're arrows in your hand. You won't get your aim off and we don't want to get our aim off. If we get just one lane off, if we get just one lane off, we'll think that preaching doctrine is not as important. If we get just one lane off, we'll think that holiness is not as important. If we get just one lane off, we'll think that apostolic rearing of parenting is not important. It is important. We can't get one lane off. 
If we get one lane off, we'll think it's more about the song than it is the Redeemer. We can't get one lane off. If we get one lane off, we'll be more worried about our time clock than eternity. If we get one lane off, we'll be more concerned with our aesthetics than with being apostolic. And so today I've come to tell you, we're going to be in your hands. You're the master. We're the arrows. We're the arrows to be in your hand. We don't want to do it the way we want it. We want it to be the way you want it. And here's what I preach to you. If we will become arrows in his hand, there is no devil in Indianapolis. There is no devil in your family. There is no addiction too great. There is no bondage so severe. If you're an arrow in your own hand, it might not work. But if you'll become an arrow in his hands through prayer, if you'll become an arrow in his hands through humility, if you'll become an arrow in his hands who's meant to be an arrow because the psalmist says that blessed is this man if his quiver is full of them speaking about the children so I want to echo I want to echo what happened during our choir song and he did not know what I was preaching and Brother Hall didn't ask me, Brother Anderson didn't ask me, but I want to echo what Brother Cameron got in this mic and said. Galatians 3, 26 through 29, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. That was the slave thing there. And in case you don't understand that, the Bible says we were all slaves to sin. But thank God, you don't have to be addicted and bound. There is neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. You're all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord. Almighty. First Peter 2 and 9, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Ladies and gentlemen, I rise to the occasion to tell you, we cannot do this on our own, but through God, through God, through, I just feel like telling that to some marriage right now. Through God. I feel like telling that to our professors and our teachers. Through God. I feel like telling some elder in this room. I know you don't think you can do it, but your intercession is as powerful as it's ever been before. You are turning things around through the power of prayer. I want you to lift your hands with me right now one more time. As arrows, as arrows, as arrows, as arrows, as arrows. Oh, why don't you stand and lift your hands? I feel something moving in this room. He on Intentional direction, according to this word, says you've got to repent. Can't fly right if you don't repent. Starts with faith. It's got to move to repentance. Forgive me, God. If there's one fletching missing, this thing won't fly right. If there's one bend in this arrow, it won't fly right. I don't rub vocals. Got to pierce the air. You're meant to be an arrow in the hands of God. I need that direction. It leads me to repentance. It leads me to baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Being immersed in the water for the remission of sin. As the name of Jesus Christ is called over you because neither is there salvation in any other. None other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm thankful for whatever steps you've made. But you've got to be baptized in that name. It's his will for you to fly right, that you be an arrow in his hand, that you be filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, you be filled with his spirit. It's not a question, it's a gift for you. 
It's a gift for you. But you hear me in conclusion. He is referenced in Scripture. Lucifer starts as a snake, ends as that great dragon. We know him to be Lucifer, that fallen angel, Satan himself. And the Bible makes reference that there are, it's not flesh and blood we're wrestling against, but we're wrestling against principalities and powers. How many know that to be true? And the Bible calls this wicked one, the one that at times masks and mirrors himself, even as an angel of light and tries to bring destruction. There are times he's a serpent and times he's a dragon, but there are times he's Delilah. Whether he be an angel of light or a slithering serpent, there is a reference that seems most important for this particular moment in time because he is also known as the prince of the air. He is trying to replace the prince of peace as the prince of the air. But I remind you that the most important factor about an arrow with all the potential is the arrow pierces the air to hit the target. And everything he's trying to do He doesn't want there to be revival here. He doesn't want there to be revival in Brownsburg. He doesn't want there to be revival in Greenwood. He doesn't want there to be revival in Zionsville. You think the prince of the air wants there to be revival in Indianapolis? Tell you what he wants. He wants our streets filled with homeless that are addicted. He, He wants our marriages abandoned. He wants our children wayward. God wants us to become his arrows. Yeah, but what about the prince of the air? An arrow in his hand will pierce through the air. This isn't an environment where revival can happen. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Everything I see from this scripture tells me in the last days, saith the Lord, that he will pour out his spirit He will pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to praise. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Upon the servants and the handmaids in those days will I pour out. Would you lift your hands? I recognize and the amount of people that are in this building, there's no way everyone can come to the altar, but you can make an altar right where you're at. If you're in the balcony and you want special prayer, you're trying to be an arrow in his hand. and you There are many people in this room, you needed this message. You need this moment right now. There are some people in this room, you're waiting on me to say you can come to the altar because you know you're at a place. I just got to tell him I'm in his hands. I'm I'm just going to have to tell him that I'm going to be in his hands. If that's you, and you say, I want to go down to the front of this building. No, everyone can't come. Everyone can't be down in the front right now. But there are probably a hundred or so people that you'd like to just get out of your seat and walk to the front and say, God, I can't do this on my own. I don't have the ability to do this on my I can't guide my family. I can't do my own life. I can't direct. I've got to. If there really is all that potential, if inspect my fletching, take a look at me, oh God, if there be any wrong thing in me, forgive me and fix it. I can't fly right if you don't put your hands on me. Someone needs to come and pray and say, but God, don't replace me. But God, don't replace me. I don't want anybody else to take my my spot in the kingdom. We'll sing in a few minutes. For now, I just want to pray all over this room. I just want to pray. Praise team, lead us in prayer. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. From the children to the elders, let's pray. Let's pray. Like children in the hands of a righteous parent, so let us be children in the hands of an almighty God.
Father, forgive us if there be any sin in us. If my thinking has been about me, forgive me. If I've been judgmental, forgive me. If my aim has been one lane off, forgive me. Help me to be effective in flight for this hour. Yes. Come on, pray over your children. Pray over your home. But pray over yourself. Sharpen, fine tune me. Help me to be an arrow effective. I want to be in your quiver used at the right time. But when you draw me from the quiver, let me not yield myself as ineffective. If he's calling you to be a Sunday school teacher, some of you, he's been tugging on your heart to join the choir. Maybe he's been tugging on your heart to be a more dynamic worshiper. Are you calling me to be a more effective arrow of evangelism? Maybe you're calling me to join the outreach team or the discipleship. Don't let me be an arrow that is missing when you're looking for an arrow in your hand. Oh, come on, pray until it springs up from within you. Jesus, Jesus. Not by might, not by power, but by your spirit, Lord. By your spirit, Lord. If you need the Holy Ghost, God will fill you with His Spirit. Evidenced by speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. If you repent, He'll take your sins away. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, we'll baptize you in that only Savior. Some are being prepared right now for baptism. We want the arrow to fly, but it's got to be in the right hand. Oh. God, let it be. God, let it be. If you're not praying, I want you to turn your attention towards the baptismal. I want you to stretch your hands. I want you to begin to pray with me right now. Guide every step. Protect his mind, his heart. Let it be an arrow in the hands of the master. Brother Mark, you're getting ready to enter into a glorious life with Jesus Christ. I am now going to bury you in baptism with him.
and you're going to rise up. God has promised you the Holy Ghost. You know, it's so glorious. God has put favor in your, upon your life. Upon the confession of your faith in God and his word and obedience to God's word, I now baptize you in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To God be the glory. We praise you, Lord. <laughs> Lord, we pray you direct him. Let him be full of the Holy Ghost and use for your glory. Come on, all heaven rejoices over one sinner that repents. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. If you're thankful for baptism, shout amen. I believe they have more being baptized. Allow me to say a couple more things. Because of shooting a bow for so long, Brother Mac, thank you for letting me borrow this traditional recurve, this style. I found in shooting a bow when I was just a young man, the more I shoot it, as I told you, the better I got. But the more that I shot my bow, Brother Trano, the longer my distances became. What I at first was not comfortable with at 10 yards, I got to the place where at 50 to 60 yards with a bow, it felt just normal. A chip shot. With more proficiency, I could hit further targets because the time I spent. Time spent with him yields proficiency. Time spent with him yields proficiency. My youngest son, Kaysen, we had this little bow that we handed down generation to generation. I've got precious video of Kaysen out there 10 yards away shooting at this target. And I used to get so tickled but Logan because I'd have him there shooting at that target and he would shoot but there wasn't enough energy in the arrow to stick in the target so it hit that target bounce off of there it's too dull at the tip not enough energy if you'll allow me that as a closing illustration, I'm afraid when we try to do it on our own, we wonder why we're not making a difference. But we're like children with ineffective equipment when we try to do it ourselves. But if we'll surrender to His plan, if we'll surrender to His will, Brother Trey, no, I, have, I feel to have special prayer for you today. I want you to come down front. I, I, I want you to come down front. I feel to have special prayer for our evangelism and our outreach. Sister Trano, I don't want to embarrass you. I want you to come with it, actually. God's trying to use our evangelism team in this. In fact, let, let's, let's step backward. If you're, if you're on the evangelism, the outreach team, I want you to come to the altar for a minute. Some of you are just, your key core members. You're a part of this weekly, on a weekly basis. I want you to come down and get around the Trano's if you're here. Want us to go ahead and start coming from around the body. We're going to pray for a minute. Let's move to baptism and then we're going to come back to this prayer. Brother Robert. The Holy Ghost in one of our church camps here Praise in Indiana, God. actually. And she wants to be baptized in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. 
Brooklyn, we're so happy for you, and we know this is going to be a brand new strength in your life, and things begin to change. But right now, I'm going to bury you with Christ in baptism. In according to your faith in God and obedience to his word, we now obey that word. Brooklyn, we're going to baptize you right now in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Use Brooklyn for your glory. Use her for your purpose. Let her be an arrow in your hands, oh God. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Brother Trano, our city so desperately. So desperately needs revival. We need to be arrows in his hand. Here's what I think. I think the time is now. I think the bow is drawn. I think the bow is drawn. Many of our elders will understand this language. I think it's time for end time revival harvest right, right now. I think it's time right now. Pastor, Pastor Carson, what, what helps bear witness to that? I'll tell you, our summer attendance alone helps bear witness to that. But the miracles that we're seeing, and the signs and the wonders that are following, and what God is doing on... If you're, if you're a newer member of Calvary, we can't tell you how thankful we are that you're a part of this body of believers. We are so thankful. This is not just for the seasoned. Pour out His Spirit on all flesh. And if you'd allow me, I know, you, I, I know you feel the weight of my heart coming through my mouth right now. I see the bow has been drawn. We don't want to do it our way. We want to do it your way. We don't want to miss a single soul. We don't. I want you to gather around Brother Traino. Before we leave, I want every hand to be stretched towards Brother and Sister Traino right now. They help lead this effort. Lead them into the right neighborhoods. To the right individuals. <laughs> Are their minds, their hearts, their spirits? Let it be. Let them be guarded. Give them liberty for flight as arrows in this city. In the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Let it be, God.
Let it be, let it be, let it be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, let's lift our hands all over the house and just worship for a moment. Jesus. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Jesus, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. Come on, let's just take a moment, receive, 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 receive. receive. Come on, some of us, the way we were raised, just begin to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We receive, we receive. Let's turn our attention back to the baptism. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Brian Wilhelm, upon confession of your faith in Almighty God and obedience to God's word, I now baptize you in the name above every name, yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, the for name remission. of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. <laughs> yes! 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 Be an arrow! Ooh. Ooh. Praise God. Praise, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Glory be to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, 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 let it be an arrow in the hand. You've heard our prayer. You've told us. You've heard our prayer. You're going to do a new thing, oh God. Praise God. Praise God. Aren't we thankful for what the Lord has done? Thankful. The worst. The worst thing that can happen to an arrow in flight is deflection. For it to come in contact with an object between its point of release and its intended point of finish. It's called deflection. I'm afraid in the Christian walk, it's called distraction.
Let us not be deflected or distracted in this season. Somebody say amen.